With this songwriting lesson, we'll take the next step in learning how to write songs on guitar using relative keys, along with guitar tabs and practice rhythm tracks. We'll cover it all at the step-by-step approach. With relative keys, you can combine the three primary chords from both major and minor keys to write six chord progressions or songs. Now, in order to write a six chord progression or song, you first need to understand how to write a basic three chord progression in any major or minor key. And we covered this in the previous songwriting lesson where we introduced a three chord method for songwriting. So if you're starting from scratch, you might want to review that songwriting lesson first. But otherwise, we can do a quick review of the three chord method in the next clip to set you up for relative keys. The three chord method is a great way for beginners to start writing songs on guitar without having to worry about using the do re mi scale, uh, degrees, or the circle of fifths. With the three chord method, you just use your guitar to determine the three basic chords in any major or minor key. And how you go about it is, say you want to write a song in the key of A. Well, to determine the three chords in the key of A, you find the three uh, primary notes in the key of A, and here's how you do it. You locate an A note on any of the bottom three strings. And we're going to use the bottom six string in this case. A is on the fifth fret. And you do this. You play this sequence of three notes. So we're on the fifth fret, then you move along the same fret, and then up two frets on that same string. So in this case, five, five, seven. Uh, those three notes correspond to the three chords in the key of A. And so a little bit of calculating, you gotta know your notes and letters. A and then D on that fifth string fifth fret and then E on the fifth string seventh fret. A, D, E correspond to A major, D major, and E major. And you go back to your home chord and that gives you a good sense of how uh, basic songs are put together. If you apply the strum pattern, so the first step in songwriting with primary chords you get sort of a folksy, country-like sound, but it's the foundation where you can start then venturing off into different musical styles. But this three chord method you can apply um, for any key, it's movable, so doing this along any fret position will help you determine the three primary chords. So if you went down to the third fret, uh, that would be the key of G, say you wanted to find the key of G, E, F, F sharp, G. Another example here, I'm reversing up the chords a little bit because once you know the three basic chords in any key, you can rearrange the running order and pretty much you make that key or the primary chord in the key, the one chord, in this case it's G, usually begin and end on that and then you can mix and match the chords in any running order in between. Uh, one more note on the three chord method. Uh, you can apply it to minor keys as well. Um, again, doing the three notes along any of the fret positions, you can come up with 12 major keys. There are also 12 minor keys in music. All you do is substitute minor chords for major chords. You're still coming up with the three primary notes. So, uh, the key of A, which is A, D, and E, those are the primary notes. You just substitute minor chords, A minor, D minor, minor, so you've got that sort of different tone going there with a minor key. Um, one thing that's good to know for this relative keys lesson, as well as even for primary chords, is to have uh, some bar chords down, some basic movable bar chord shapes. That would be uh, what would be the open E minor shape, having that be movable, and then the open A minor shape, playing that movable bar minor chord. That's because, aside from the key of A minor, which has all open minor chords, every other minor key you have to bar. So, say we did G minor, the key of G minor. Uh, you remember we just did the key of G, which was G, C, and D. Um, for a minor key, you would play a G minor chord, a C minor chord, and a D minor chord. So there's the bar chords coming into play. 
again, this is a movable, this method is movable. You can determine the three chords to any minor key using any of the bottom three strings. And uh, with that, uh, that's a quick sort of Cliff Notes version of what we did in the previous lesson with songwriting. So if you're comfortable with that, uh, having the ability to come up with the three primary chords in any major or minor key, we're now going to set us up for relative keys. And again, we're for this lesson as well as the previous one, we're going to leave out degrees, the circle of fifths, and the do re mi scale. Those will come in handy later, uh, but if you're just starting off with songwriting, uh, we have two primary objectives with this lesson. Number one, we want to show you a method to come up with the six chords uh, in any in any key, the six relative chords, three majors and three minors. We're going to show you a method to first determine those chords. And then after that, the second objective is to simply strum some progressions so you can hear how these chords harmonize together. And for a beginner, I believe, you get that first step down, then you apply uh, the degrees, uh, the do, re, mi scale, and the circle fifths of that, and they'll make a little bit more sense once you complete this lesson. Now, for every major key in music, there is a related or relative minor key that will harmonize with it. And if you already have that three chord progression down that we covered in the previous clip, uh, that will come in handy now because that will be the foundation uh, for a relative key songwriting method where we determine the six chords that harmonize together in a certain key. And we're going to go back to A major, what we did in the previous clip. Uh, the three primary chords applying the three chord method, you would come up with A, D, and E on the along the fifth fret. Well, to determine the three minor chords that harmonize with the key of A major, uh, you have to shift. You don't stay in A. It's not going to be A minor, D minor, and E minor. Uh, we have to shift three frets down to determine the relative minor key. So, one, two, three, and then we do the same method. And those three notes are going to correspond to the relative minor chords or relative minor key to the key of A major. And those notes are F sharp on the second fret, moving over to B on the fifth string second fret, and C sharp two frets higher. So that's where knowing the movable minor bar chord shapes will come in handy because you have to borrow all three of these. There's your F sharp minor. There's your B minor. And there's your C sharp minor. Those three minor chords harmonize with A, D, and E. So if uh, you've never harmonized relative chords or keys before, uh, there's a lot, a lot of variations you can apply here with these six chords. Um, if you did do the previous songwriting lesson or you are familiar with basic three chord or one, four, five progressions, that's a great foundation uh, because you're able to hear um, obvious, like with the minor keys, an obvious sad or serious kind of dirge-like progression. And with the major keys or major chords, you hear sort of a happy folksy country sort of progression. If you have that down and you've gone through basic three chord progressions, again, that's a great foundation. Uh, but what we're going to do in the next clip is we're going to strum through uh, all the chords in the key of A, all six chords, and you're going to hear how the major and minor chords harmonize together within the same key. Now this six chord songwriting method is movable, meaning you can apply it uh, anywhere along the bottom string. Uh, in fact, you can also use the method starting from the fifth or the fourth strings as well. So any of the bottom three strings, 
you can apply the six chord method to. It's just a matter of how much counting up you have to do. So uh, let's do another example. Uh, how about the key of G? What would be the six chords in the key of G, the three primary major chords and the three relative minor chords? If you want, you can pause the video and see if you can determine it on your own. Otherwise, here's how we would come up with the six chords in the key of G. Um, Again, it'll end up being the bottom string. Uh, that'll be the quickest way to get to G. Uh, G would be on the third fret, E, F, F sharp, G. We can go down three frets because we can go to the open position and apply the method. Uh, so, going back to our primary chords on the third fret, G, C, and D. And then to determine the relative minor key to the key of G major, one, two, three frets lower, open, zero zero two and that's E so that note is E and so we're going to actually determine the key of E minor with this E A and B so E minor A minor and B minor harmonize with the key of G major the key of G is the most popular key in guitar music. So uh, getting familiar with the relative minor chords in the key of G uh, is a big deal if you uh, want to get into songwriting. Uh, so again with the next clip what we'll do is we'll mix up all six chords uh, so you can hear how they harmonize together in the key of G. Now this six chord relative keys method will work again on any of the bottom three strings. So the next key we're going to determine will be the key of C. Uh, again, if you want to pause the video, uh, see if you can figure out the six chords in the key of C and which would be the best string to use to determine those six chords. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to show you how to do it right now. Uh, for the key of C, well, we've got D, A, and E for the bottom three strings to choose from. A is the best bet. We're going to go A, A sharp, B, and C. We're going to start on the third fret of the fifth string. Uh, this is going to be similar to how we figured out the previous one, the key of G. We're just on the fifth string this time. Uh, the three primary uh, notes or chords will be C, F, and G. Three frets lower will be the relative minor key, one, two, three, and those three chords, or the notes will be A, D, and E, and those will correspond to A minor, D minor, and E minor. So the key of A minor is related to the key of C. So with that, uh, we'll get acclimated to the key of C, another popular key for guitar music. Uh, we'll extend the progression a little bit and play all six chords, relative chords, in the key of C.
once you get familiar with the chord changes with these relative keys, you can start to get a little bit more creative with things by throwing in some variations. Uh, what I mean by variations is one idea. You can start rearranging the running order of the chords that you play. For example, in the key of C, which we just did, uh, you can take those six chords, C, F, G, A minor, D minor, E minor, and rearrange them in pretty much any order that you want, and you will still be in the key of C, because that six chord combination is unique to the key of C. It's associated with the key of C. Um, you do want to start, if you really want to be in the key of C, you want to start and end on a C chord, at least for now to start. Uh, but rearranging the running order is another way to start being creative with these relative keys. And another idea regarding a variation is with the strumming hand. For most of us, the right hand. Uh, you don't necessarily have to strum through these progressions. You could actually substitute fingerstyle technique uh, and compose that way with relative keys. So what we're going to do in the next clip, we're going to apply fingerstyle technique to the same progression we did in the key of C. Uh, the fingerstyle pattern will be this. each chord. Uh, one note, um, I happen to prefer an F slash C chord voicing for F. You could technically call that an F chord, but I'm going to apply finger style technique to the middle four strings like this. And then I'm going to play a different G chord voicing uh, with the third and pinky finger down on the top two strings. And I'm going to apply a finger style technique like that for this next progression. That's what we're going to do in the next clip. Apply fingerstyle technique using the relative chords in the key of C. Up to this point, we have worked with relative keys starting from a major key perspective. In other words, uh, we started the song with a major key, and then we went down three frets using the method to determine the relative minor chords or the relative minor key. Well, what if you write a song from a minor perspective? In other words, what if you start off with minor chords, and you want to find out what major chords harmonize with those chords? Well, pretty much you're going to just reverse the method. Um, a great analogy to get this down if you are familiar with baseball. Uh, in baseball, if you're in the minor leagues, you are below the major leagues. Uh, so if you're in the majors and your coach tells you you're going to the minors, you're going down. Uh, with relative keys, you're going down to find your relative minor key. But if you're in a minor key, and you want to locate your major chords, you move up three frets. So you go higher when you go major, you go lower when you go down minor, and it's three frets each way. Um, let's apply that now to the key of A minor. Um, what would be the six chords in the key of A minor, your primary minor chords and your relative major chords? Uh, you can pause the video if you want, and keep in mind, uh, you also have to ask yourself which of the bottom three strings will work best using the six chord method. Remember, you find A and then you're going to go up three frets. So let's show you how that works right now. Uh, the best string to use would be the fifth string to determine the six chords in the key of A minor. We have an A right there open. So, and those notes are A, D, and E. So we have our primary chords in the key of A minor, A minor, D minor, E minor, moving up three frets we would end up with C on the 5th string 3rd fret, C, F, and G. So the 6 chords in the key of A minor are A minor, D minor, E minor, C, F, and G. Now that uh, arrangement of chords, those 6 chords might sound a little familiar because those are the same 6 chords 
that we use to determine the key of C major. Um, the key of C major, the key of A minor, they both contain the same six chords. That's why they are relative keys. Um, in future lessons, we'll bring this up. The relative keys because they share the same seven notes. That's why all the chords harmonize together. Uh, but right now, uh, you might be asking yourself, well, what's the difference between the key of A minor and the key of C major if they have the same six chords? And the answer to that is the perspective. In other words, what chord are you focusing on, starting and ending? Um, and you hear the difference. Um, if you did a basic three chord progression, say, um, we went C, A minor, F, G. C, A minor, F, G, and we should end with C. That's obviously in the key of C because C is our focal point, the first and last chord. Now what if we change things up and started with an A minor and ended with one? C, G. Now, technically, it's the same key, and some could say, uh, especially if you're looking at written notation, the staff, uh, the key signatures of the staff, they only tell you what major key a song is in. Uh, so, some could say that's in the key of C major, but actually, a more accurate description of this progression is that it's in the key of A minor, because it starts off kind of sad and sad. So that is the difference with these relative keys, is what chord do you focus on? Uh, so what we're going to do in the next clip, we'll run through a progression in the key of A minor. And you'll hopefully you'll hear that difference uh, between a key of A minor progression and the key of C progression, even though we're using the same six chords. The six chord relative keys method is just the first step in helping you getting acclimated to using relative keys. Over time with enough practice, you will simply just know what the six chords are in a particular key, especially the more common keys using guitar music. And that is what is shown here on the chart. I have a relative keys chart, so since you already have the method down by this point, uh, if you want to just jump into working out some progressions in various keys, uh, you can rely on this chart. Uh, so again, with me, the first step, learn a method so you can determine the chords, uh, get some practice in, and eventually you'll just memorize the more popular keys. Uh, but this method uh, you can always have in your back pocket. Uh, down the road you'll come across an unusual key, maybe a piano key that you're playing on guitar, and you can always rely on this six chord method uh, for a quick fix. Uh, major key, find it, determine your primary notes, go down three frets. Minor key, find it, uh, determine your primary chords, and go up three frets for the relative major key. Now, Regardless of whatever goals you may have as a guitarist, understanding how relative keys work is simply going to help you become more self-sufficient at learning guitar. Uh, one example is having or developing the ability to pick up songs by ear. That's because most of the time, uh, the first chord of the song is the actual key of the song. So if you know about relative keys, that will indicate to you uh, what the other chords, uh, what other chords are most likely you're going to hear in that song. So for example, G, the most popular key in guitar music, you hear that opening G strum, you already know what the other five chords uh, would be that would harmonize with the key of G. And again, most likely, uh, some of those chords are going to be in that song. And again, from a relative keys perspective, it'll also help you correct errors. Uh, you may look at something on the internet, there's no guarantee 
uh, when you look at chord symbols or guitar tabs on the internet that they're 100 percent right so say you're working on a song that you know is in the key of G and you see a chord that doesn't fit uh, you can correct that error if you know how to use relative keys. Now, from a songwriting perspective, understanding relative keys can help either build upon or even complete an original songwriting idea. And it doesn't matter if you're an established songwriter or a beginner. A lot of songs start off with real basic ideas. And from a chord perspective of strumming chords, it could either be maybe a two or three chord progression. Uh, and again, I've seen a lot of beginners do this. I went through it myself, where you might strum a two chord progression. Maybe have a lyric that goes with it. Boom, there is your songwriting idea. Uh, but with music theory, you're able to build upon those ideas a little bit. Uh, of course, you could keep working at something through trial and error. But if you know something's in the key of G, again, usually that first chord indicates the key. Uh, you have now five other chords that you can throw into that mix uh, to start building upon your original songwriting ideas. Knowing how relative keys work can also help you study other songwriters because now when you learn a song rather than just copying the chords you can look at it from a songwriting perspective and what's great about relative keys is sometimes you can see how artists follow the rules but you can also see how they sometimes break the rules as well. Uh, so again, from this point on, usually when I teach relative keys to my own students, every other song from here on out, we look at it from a songwriting perspective as well. Um, so again, there's a lot more to it, uh, but again, you'll find a lot of popular songs uh, just rely on basic progressions. And I have some examples here on the screen of songs you can check out uh, that use relative keys. Once you have this lesson down, the next step is to work with songwriting techniques with different styles of music. Uh, you could also go into more detail on how keys and relative keys are constructed by studying degrees. Uh, but regardless of which way you go, uh, you will find that relative keys are the foundation for learning songwriting for all styles of music.